Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin from Sip and Dip Australia and today I'm going to be walking you through this virtual learn to paint class. So this video will obviously go a lot quicker than what it might take you to paint the piece but just feel free to pause wherever you need some extra time and just pick up when you're ready. Alrighty, so we're going to get started with our background. So I am taking my blue and popping it onto my canvas from the top just in this crisscross motion that you can see I'm doing. And I'm just going to work my way across that top um, quarter of the canvas. Just keeping that crisscross motion going the whole time, filling in all of those white spots. You can add in some extra blue in some places if you want it to be a bit darker. It's also up to you if you want to let it dry for a little bit and come back with another layer of blue so that it's a bit darker as well. Just don't forget to do the sides of your canvases as well. Alright, so you can see here that I've just wiped my brush off um, so that there is no blue on it. You can use a little bit of water if you like. Um, I found that I didn't need to. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that I've done with the blue uh, with the pink. So now that you're done with your blue and pink, we're going to do the same thing again in the middle, this time with our white. So we want to get quite a lot of white on our paintbrush, same crisscross motions that we're doing, and we want to overlap it just a little bit with that blue and pink. So I've started with my blue first, then I'll go ahead and do the same thing with my pink, and then adding some white into that middle section. We don't want the colour to drag right into the middle of that white just yet. After I've done that first lot of white, I do wipe off my brush and kind of go over where that blue and white meet. Um, you might want to add a little bit more white, you might want to add a bit more blue because you've added too much white. It's really up to what you like the look of um, and how much you want this to blend. You could ultimately spend three minutes on this process or 15 minutes. It's really up to you what you like the look of. So for example, in this part, you can see I'm adding some more pink to where my pink was. I just dragged that white down a little bit too much for my liking and I wanted some more pink through it. So I've just grabbed some more pink on my paintbrush and done those same crisscross motions to work it up in through the white and blend that through. I'm sure you guys are stopping and starting. I know you can't paint as fast as I'm talking, but this is just blending, blending, blending getting that nice white strip through the middle, blending the white into your colours as much as you like. Alrighty, so when you're happy with your background, we're going to go ahead, grab our black, and we're going to add in our branches. This is another step where you really have creative range, and you can go ahead and add in whatever you like. You can have more branches, thinner branches, thicker branches. It's really up to you. I personally like the look of some of those thinner branches stemming out just so I can put my flowers on them. I'm sure you paused and joined us again, but after you've done your branches, we're going to go ahead and add our cherry blossoms in. So the cherry blossoms are really quite easy. You just want to get some of that pink paint on your brush. Um, here I mixed my pink paint with some white so I could add some darker pink over the top to add some dimension in the end. Um, but it's just ultimately strokes of your brush into the center of where your cherry blossom flower would be. You can add as many or as little cherry blossoms as you like. I kept it quite simple for this video um, so you guys could see them better but we do have some other examples that have a lot more cherry blossoms on the branch. So now that you have as many or as little cherry blossoms as you like, we're going to go ahead and start with our girl sitting on the swing. We're going to start with the bottom of the swing first, and we want to put this on an angle so that the left side is further down and the right side is further up on our canvas, so that we get that idea of her being swinging up in the breeze, I guess. Once you have that line for the bench of your swing, we want to add in two lines on either side coming from the branches. This can be different branches for you, obviously, because everybody's branches are different. We just want to have that curve, the middle of the curve, going to the left. Again, so we get that illusion of the girl swinging up in the breeze. We want to do these on both sides. As you'll see, I start doing the other one. 
and you'll start to get that picture of the swing. All right, so now that you have that basic swing shape, we're gonna add some little tassels into the top of the ropes for the swing. Obviously the ropes would be tied around where that branch is. So we just want some little loose ends where the rope's hanging down from where it's been tied. And I do the same thing at the bottom of my swing as well. Um, you can add these in after you've done the girl on the swing. So starting with the girl on the swing, I like to start with the body and I like to think of this as like a potato shape, sounds a little bit weird, but like a long potato. <laughs> and then you want to add in her bent arm on the left side of this. Um, this is obviously easy to follow with the pictures, not so much easy to explain. <laughs> Um, but it's almost like a potato with an arm on their hip, I guess, kind of looks like that. Or some people say it looks like a bit of a bird, so the beak is pointing to the left. Um, obviously you can pause and start this video wherever you need to, but starting with the body is definitely the easiest part. Filling in your shapes as you go also helps with a visual picture of your girl coming together and what parts maybe you need to make a bit thicker, things like that. So here is the skirt. I haven't made this part of the video faster because I feel like it's easier for you to watch this in normal speed and then you can pause and start again as you like. So I just add the skirt section along the bench seat. Filling in that shape as you go. Um, some people like to just flick their brush out for the end of her skirt. I've done a bit of a edge um, on this one, like a scalloped edge. Alrighty, so now for the head, which people often think is the hardest part, it's actually quite easy. So we're going to start with a half moon shape, just kind of drawing a C, and then filling it in like a half moon. Once you have that shape, we're just going to add in strokes for her hair. So just flicking the paintbrush, doing some kind of swirly strokes out towards the right of your canvas. This process is going to look quite strange to start with, obviously, um, but as you get more strokes it'll become fuller and then it's more of a silhouette and it looks quite lovely. Alrighty, so now we're going on to the legs. So you want to imagine that the knee is sitting under the end of that dress. So all you need to be painting is her calf area of her leg and her foot. So you want to make sure that the top of your leg coming from her knee is a bit thicker. Bring it down to a nice point and then add the foot shape onto the end, which is kind of just a flick of your paintbrush, flicking it up for her toes and then joining the leg and the foot with an ankle like so. Now some of you definitely would have watched that part back, but for the second leg, same thing, thicker where her leg is coming out from under her dress into a nice thin point on the end, then you're going to add her foot on. And then join her foot to that pointed part of her leg to make an ankle. Now I can guarantee you went back and watched that leg part again, but by now you should have um, almost a finished girl sitting on your swing. This is where you can go back and you can add in any extra bits. You might want to add in a little bit more hair to make her hair look thicker, maybe longer, um, maybe make her arm a little bit thicker to kind of make her proportions look right. But 
you're almost finished. So to complete my piece, I just add some little tassels onto the end of the swing as like a little finishing touch. And now you're done. Congratulations, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys, for this virtual sip and dip class. Now we love to see what you guys have created from our tutorials. So please don't forget to share your pieces through our social media, um, Facebook, Instagram. We love to see what you guys have created and I can't wait to see some of these pieces. See you next time, guys. Bye.